start with you, Nitin. Uh, you've implemented data catalogs at three large brand name companies, PayPal, Visa, and Twitter. What were the primary challenges you faced in those implementations and how did they differ? Uh, thanks, Wayne, and uh, that's a great question. Um, and, you know, looking at last 20 years, uh, having implemented such things across different uh, companies, and in last 20 years, as you were showing that slide about the age of data and age of uh, metadata, uh, you know, things evolve over a period of time. So from PayPal, that was in 2006, the problem was how do we mitigate the cost surge that was coming on storage system? to Twitter where our challenge was how to mitigate the compliance risk. And the biggest challenge across all of this, which is very common is, what is the definition of complete? How do I know that my catalog is complete and it is correct? So, you know, and again, right, you, you bank on tribal knowledge, you look at the smartest person in the room, or you make some gut feeling assessment that, hey, you know, it looks like complete, but you know, uh, across every single thing, what I had to do is I had to bank on reconciliation of information. And we had to tie many catalogs to the procurement system to see that are we accounting for every single byte of data to make sure that the catalog is complete. Otherwise, you think that the catalog is complete on day one and within, within two days, it is out of state, out of date. Hmm. And again, right, finding the methods to reconcile is the most important thing. And having that sense of data that tells you that, hey, what does that completeness mean? And is it really complete or not? Interesting. Uh, so David, you helped Nitin develop a data catalog at Twitter. Uh, so what would you say are the keys to success for implementing a data catalog? Yeah, Wayne, so based on the experience at Twitter, but also at some other companies, major companies like Dell, T-Mobile, and others, um, and the big banks, first and foremost is to have a clear use case. Uh, use cases, rather, that encompass the broad representation of user personas. Too many of the data catalog projects are run by IT for IT or by mm -hmm. technical data stewards and doesn't take into account the non-technical users. So here's an idea, like let a business leader be the executive sponsor and owner of the data catalog. Don't let IT or risk leader. Uh, you know, at Twitter, interestingly, the, the initiative to develop the data management office and catalog were started, initiated because of uh, risk and compliance reasons, uh, GDPR, et cetera. But then in the end, it's the product leader that becomes the owner. At Dell, it's the same thing. It's a chief customer officer who ended up owning data catalog after it kind of circulates around different IT and data lead, uh, technical leaders. We also need a robust data literacy and just ongoing stewardship training program to encourage adoption, as you mentioned. Our data catalog fits the enterprise use out of the box. It needs to be continuously tailored. It, there, there needs to be user experience experts and data integrations experts that continuously improve that data catalog ecosystem. And finally, metadata is data. It's kind of ironic. A lot of times we, we initiate data catalogs so that we can man help organizations manage data as an asset. But the data catalog team itself or the data governance team itself is not resources, not equipped or staff to manage the metadata as a full you know, enterprise grade data asset. Right. And, and so we have a lot of stories of how the metadata from the catalog cannot integrate with the systems catalog in the in a CMDB systems or with the security metadata, et cetera. So you definitely need to treat that metadata as its own, almost like a data mart or even metadata lake. Yeah, I like that. You got to treat metadata as data, which means that one reason probably why a data catalog is so hard to implement is that you're creating a whole second program for managing data. It just happens to be metadata yes. and it's not easy. So you, you actually have two programs, a data program and a metadata program. That's what we see in a lot of our consulting engagements. Um, we're, you know, we're helping companies get over that first hill of data management at the same time, you know, wrapping the, the metadata and the data governance around that so it's successful. So, Nitin, back to you. If you had to do it all over again, would you do anything differently when implementing a data catalog at any of the companies you work at? No, absolutely. I think, um, you know, one of my learning is, like, you know, if I parachute into a company and start saying that, hey, we have to implement and enforce data governance practice, there's always perception about data governance that it is a bureaucratic process. 
and we are doing it for some regulatory purpose. And that regulatory purpose is not very appealing to many engineering folks across the organization. That means that you have, you have a goal to achieve, but you do not have hands to execute on that goals because it is not compelling for that audience. And that creates a lot of friction. And, you know, essentially what ends up happening is somebody high up in the ladder, you know, sends a top-down message that, hey, we have to make it happen. That is not the best state to be in to be able to enforce it. So if I have to do it again, right, I will definitely use facts. I'll try to drive action using facts, identifying hall of fame and hall of shame metrics that is common across different audience. People can challenge the process, but people cannot challenge the facts. And, you know, that is what I felt was very helpful as I implemented things in Twitter. You know, I had to, in fact, uh, reframe the data governance to auditing process. So I call that, hey, we are building an auditing system. And that auditing system surfaced all the key metrics, repository, governance, and facts, saying that, okay, you're talking about this data, but this data is not used for a while. So why we cannot purge it? Or there is an IT application that I know is used for wrong purpose, you know, and why it is so. So when we say that, hey, you know, implement the right access control, that is a very open-ended statement. But if I give them and show the facts that, hey, you know, you're using it for this purpose, if this metrics gets exposed to media or leaked, there is a serious repercussions in terms of brand reputation and also regulatory penalties. So once you tie those repercussions, what is going to happen if we do not do that and support those actions using facts and have a very good handle on the auditing system that you incorporate, the chances are that you will get the traction and respect that you warrant as you implement and navigate that process. Excellent. David, back to you. Uh, you've got a lot of expertise in data privacy and cybersecurity. Uh, is a data catalog an absolute requirement these days for ensuring data privacy and managing cybersecurity? Yes, and so I think my personal opinion is it is becoming so, right? Uh, under the NIST cybersecurity framework, asset management is actually considered one of the strategic pillar of a successful cybersecurity program. That includes data discovery systems, API catalogs, these are considered foundational, but unfortunately, they're often among the least mature capability in many of the company's scorecards whenever they assess their cybersecurity program. So you can still get by without a data catalog, but if you know your company wants to implement advanced capability, such as zero trust security, attribute-based access control, uh, DevSecOps, or if they just simply want to be accelerating the AI and data product lifecycle without breaking security, they absolutely need to have the capability of a data catalog. This is probably the reason why many of the cybersecurity and privacy and risk technology vendors lately have been building their own data discovery modules. Mm -hmm. uh, one in particular, even uh, some in particular, even build their own um, customer matching module, which is very interesting. Uh, on the other hand, from the data management uh, vendor landscape, there's a couple of acquisitions, Databricks, Informatica, they've you know, acquired data access management firms, Okera, Professera, uh, Microsoft has announced that they're integrating Purview as a built-in governance and security capability into their data fabric. So there's a lot of development where the, the integration between the catalog and the security and privacy capabilities are becoming more integral to the product itself. Great, thanks for that insight. Um, now, the purpose of the CDL Tech Vent is to help data leaders and their teams make better purchasing decisions. Uh, so what advice can you give them about how to evaluate uh, data catalogs? What would be the most important thing that they should look at from your opinion? And this is for both of you. I'll keep your uh, responses short. That would be helpful. Sounds good. I can start like, you know, and uh, David, you take it over. So. Uh, I think uh, in last uh, 10 years or so, I was uh, definitely in a position where I had to do a lot of evaluation for third party solutions and uh, think about, you know, what can help us uh, accelerate our journey. And at times, you know, we just felt that, hey, there is a magic bullet in those third party solutions that can solve my problems uh, on day one. 
So I think my advice will be define the problem statement very well and what goals you have from the catalogs. You know, it could be engineering velocity, it could be data discovery, it could be regulatory issues, or it could be just operational efficiency. And then when you look at a third-party solution, be very clear about what you want to achieve from those tools. Some of those tools are fantastic, right? You know, they can be great accelerator and catalyst, but still the ball is in your court. They still bank on your own knowledge, your own data for them to be successful. If, you know, some, sometimes we bring in those third-party solution and do not give them enough support in terms of uh, engineering and those tools fail. Please note that, you know, they bring in workflow assessment like Calibra or they bring uh, uh, auditing capabilities like uh, Alishian or many other tools. They're fantastic for what they do, but they still depend upon your knowledge and your data to be successful. And I would say define the expectation very well. It is not magic that some third party solution will come and it will magically solve everything on day one. You know, have a right expectation from them. And do make sure that, you know, you support them to be successful and then basically have a way to measure it. The final thing will be, you know, have a metrics in place to assess good, bad, complete and incomplete. And that is on you. That is not on anybody else. Once you define it, you can evaluate it and you can make things and uh, tools very countable. Great. And thank you. Now, Dave, you get the last word. <laughs> okay. No, I think I agree with everything that, you know, uh, Nitin has said and you have said earlier, and maybe just uh, not much to add, but this is a hot market. It's always going to mushroom um, data catalog uh, products and capabilities. So I definitely would recommend that leaders choose a tool that can work across various types of data sources that can integrate well with other tools, such as the marketplace, the uh, machine learning ops, the data pipelines, security and privacy tools. If, you, if in a complex organization it is possible that there will be multiple data catalogs or multiple metadata repositories or many catalogs of some sorts. And so it's very important to choose a tool that can integrate well, that has an open interface. I definitely would look into the product roadmap to make sure that there is a future expansion or integration with capabilities in areas such as security and privacy that I discussed for like major vendors are already going that direction. I think everybody will head that direction, especially lately there's been a lot you know, with AI uh, coming to the con uh, consciousness of the general public. Uh, there's gonna be more and more data sharing and the White House Office of Science and Technology Policies have recently issued a national strategy for what they call privacy preserving data sharing and analytics, PPDSA. Sorry for the long acronym, don't know who chose that, uh, but essentially, they're trying to promote standards for this class of tech, you know, capabilities like homomorphic encryption, differential privacy, synthetic data. These are, if you want to deploy this at scale, you're definitely going to need a catalog capability. So I, I project that a lot of data catalog and these capabilities are going to integrate more, especially in the light of the encouragement of the, uh, the office of the president. And finally, I would choose a tool that have good UI and UX. And if the tool does not have great out of the box UI, make sure that it's easy to build custom UI on top of it. Make sure they got good API libraries that are well supported and documented so that your front end, as well as your integration engineers can work seamlessly.